Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Wassalam, Allah Rasulillah. Uh, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I want to share with you something very personal uh, in my life. Um, it's a story of the greatest journey that me and my wife uh, and my mother we were able to make together. Uh, is the journey of Hajj. Uh, it, the story actually begins way before Hajj. Uh, a year before Hajj, we found out, my wife and I, the ruling about Hajj, which is if a Muslim is financially and physically able to make Hajj, then they should do it. At that time we were physically able but financially unable. But we made the intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, we want to go for Hajj if you would allow us to go and inshallah we will go with our financial help. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe it or not, in less than a year or in a year's time, he provided for us from sources we could not think of and alhamdulillah we went on that, uh, on that journey, alhamdulillah. And one of the greatest things about the Hajj that you will experience when you go there yourself, inshallah, is that a moment of truth. For us, it was a moment of truth. You know, we hear all our lives, the, the lives of the Sahabas, the life of the Prophet Muhammad the companions and how they lived and how they struggled. But it is one thing when you hear and it is something else when you are there. Uh, when you look at the jagged mountains of Mecca, you start to wonder that these are the rocks that the Sahabas and the messengers, they looked at, they're still there, and that you feel a moment of truth. And the moment of truth is even more powerful when you are coming closer and closer to the Kaaba. I still remember that moment uh, when you were... Uh, uh, When Alhamdulillah, when you come to the Kaaba, the Mecca, the, you feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot help it. Uh, you feel His mercy. And I really recommend that you read uh, the, the, the translation of the Surah Al Fajr, uh, especially by uh, the scholars like the Numan Ali Khan. You can listen to it and it will help you understand uh, that moment of entrance. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Fajr, he, he reminds us that, O oh, rested soul, O oh, rested uh, nafs, come, uh, come to, your rob, uh, to your Rabb pleased, uh, come to Allah pleased, and enter into the company of, of His servants. Now imagine you are dressed in the final garb that you're going to be dressed when you depart from this world, in the kafan clothes. And now you're entering into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of your death. And you are coming to Allah uh, and you're asking Him, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Oh Allah, I'm here. I'm here. So Allah wants us to exercise the uh, moment that we will inshallah meet Him by going for Hajj, preparing for that moment. And that is a great experience that none of us can really uh, explain it unless you've gone there yourself, you know it uh, firsthand what it feels. And when you see uh, the Kaaba, uh, it is an amazing experience. And some scholars, uh, they say that whenever, and this is an authentic hadith, I, I, ver I verified it with our local Imam, Sheikh Abdul Hadi, is that when you first see the Kaaba and whatever dua you make, Allah will accept those dua from you, inshallah. So that also is a great opportunity for you to benefit from. I recommend two du'as. One is the du'a that, O oh Allah, please uh, accept uh, uh, all my du'as after this du'a. Or, O oh Allah, allow me to die as a Muslim and join me as a righteous, uh, with the righteous. I mean. And so, besides the experience of Hajj, you also get to experience uh, the, the, the togetherness of the people. And you also get to experience what is it like to be in extreme uh, stressful situations at times, but being able to exercise patience. Because Hajj is nothing if we don't have patience. And what Hajj teaches us is that if we are able to be patient with all kinds of people from all parts of the world in the most difficult of circumstances, then inshallah when we come back to the real world, then we are going to be even more patient uh, when there is so much less uh, uh, position, uh, positions of difficulty in, in our, uh, our lives. Um, so that is one of the greatest benefits, uh, to be able to exercise patience, to learn it, to be able to be uh, living with people in harmony while being in difficult uh, situations. 
the, the sermon of Prophet Muhammad the last sermon that he had given us, this is the, the, uh, the final uh, uh, sermon for the Hajj because he had performed Hajj once and he, was, he knew that that would be his last year. Uh, so he gathered the people uh, near the Mount Arafat and he called them. He says, O oh people, give me an attentive ear. Therefore, I do not know if this will be my last year. Uh, so the people knew in their hearts that this may be his last year. And he wanted to give them some very important information, but in a concise way. Uh, but things that will benefit us throughout the generations to come. And one of the key messages, some of the key points were, uh, number one, is the, uh, the biggest section actually was talking about the rights of women uh, in, in Islam. And he had focused a lot on that. Uh, also on interest, uh, for example, av avoiding interest in our life. As you look at the current financial situations worldwide, in our, even in our personal lives, we're all affected by interest. Whereas this, if without life without interest, is, if it is based on trade, it is so much better. Uh, y you can experience this, as you can see, most economies, when they're in financial difficulty, they know that in order to enhance economic uh, 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 transaction is to reduce interest to zero percent, to make it easy for people to be able to invest in, in businesses. The third section was on about the equality of man uh, and woman and that there is no uh, uh, specific race that has been given priority over the other race. That uh, God Almighty, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us all equal uh, and that we are no different from one based on our color, our gender, our place of origin. But the thing that is most beloved to Allah is our God consciousness, is our piety, our taqwa. And that is what makes us higher in His ranking. Uh, and none of us are able to see that except Allah. He is the only one. So for us, when we are dealing with human beings, we should treat each other as equal. Uh, there is no difference whether I come from a different continent or somebody else is from a different complexion. It really makes no difference. But the real difference is that uh, is, uh, the God consciousness. And the more God, more God conscious a human being is, the more beneficial that human being is towards uh, uh, other fellow creations. Uh, and, and if we are like that, then that is the key message uh, for peace and hope. Uh, and you know, what's even amazing is that the Sahaba, uh, they had mentioned that before Islam, they were, uh, the, the Quraysh people were actually uh, not even uh, considering women as a, a human being. They used to consider them as uh, an object that they would buy and sell and do whatever. But after Islam, how the Sahabas uh, or the Muslims treated women became the sole indicator how good they were as a Muslim. Because Prophet had mentioned, the best of you are those who are best to his wife or to his family. And so it's not how good we are to the public, that's easy, you know, if I'm standing here in front of you for one hour, I can be a very nice person. But when I go back home, if I'm mean to my family, to my children, <coughs> that's really what defines me as a human being. I will end it uh, with this, uh, uh, with two reminders. One, one scholar had measured that uh, uh, if a man, if his private behavior is worse than his public behavior, then that is a sign of oppression. If a man, if his private behavior is the same as his public behavior, then that is a sign of justice. And if a man, if his private behavior is better than his public behavior, then that is a sign of faith. And one of the things, what I mean by private behavior is how he behaves with his family or how he behaves when nobody is watching him and he knows only Allah is watching him. So that is a sign of faith. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, please I recommend reading the Surah Al-Hajj. If you read the Surah Al-Hajj, you will see, you would have expected that Allah starts by saying, Oh, human beings, go and perform Hajj, it is a great act. That is, that is not how Surah Al-Hajj starts. If you read the Surah Al-Hajj, you will see Allah gives a very vivid description of the Day of Judgment, which is a very, very scary description. If some of us who are financially able and physically able are contemplating whether to go for Hajj or not, or delaying it for a later time, please don't delay it. Because you don't know if this is your last year. If this is the, this is the moment that you have financial and physical ability, make the intention right now to go and perform Hajj. 
believe me, you will never be sorry because Allah promises lots of lots of benefits from Hajj. I have many benefits that I have benefited from Hajj myself. I can give you examples from others. Uh, my, my friend who was in sales, he mentioned, for example, he was doing very bad in sales before he w went for Hajj. And he went with his wife and together they went. And he says, Brother Fahim, when I came back, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me so much barakah in my business that I'm making more money than doctors right now. So if you're worried about financial reasons, don't be. If you're worried about uh, your other excuses, believe me, Allah will take care of all of your needs when you go for Hajj. So please don't delay it and, and go for it. You will be one of the best things you have done in your entire life. And Allah knows best. If I've said anything correct, it's uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I've said anything good, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I've said anything wrong, it's from me. And uh, please forgive me. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa akhir dawana wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.